First, I would like to thank Professor Yong Nam Lee for invitation. So my talk is, as already mentioned, um, is about algebraic surfaces in view of MMP. So I want to treat algebraic surfaces as a toy example of minimal model program. So my plan is as follows. So first, I will, would like to talk about some classification problems in algebraic geometry. So basically, this, this lecture will be about motivations and some examples. So So today, most of the time, I will, I will talk about some classical result known in algebraic surfaces. And for the last 10 or 15 minutes, I'm going to view the classification uh, uh, in the point of view, in viewpoint of MMP. And tomorrow, I'm going to talk about surface singularities. So actually, in MMP, MMP for surfaces, singularities is not needed. We, one can run MMP for smooth surfaces. But in higher dimensions, singularities are unavoidable. So as a basic toy example, I'm going to view the surface singularities arising in MMP. And it turned out that actually, it is quite well suited for the classical notion of surface singularities and the um, notions in MMP. Uh, finally, I am going to talk about Uri dream surfaces. So for the first two talks, um, these are actually just the two examples of higher dimensional MMP. But for the final topic, um, Actually, this is needed for higher dimensional purpose, so I'm going to talk about it. But um, this will be only briefly mentioned, so it will be only sketched. Okay, so this is my rough plan. And before starting this lecture, I'm going to uh, give a slogan. So the slogan is it's like I'm not sure if the, if the audience can read this because my Chinese writing is ugly, but you know this wisdom word is originally from Confucius, right so uh, so if I translate it, then studying the old one and um, understand or know or invent the new things. Okay, so this is the catch. This is slogan of my talk. So this part is actually for for the first two talks. The the first part will be this part, and the last part will be this. Part. Okay. So I'm a little bit afraid that actually. This is a preschool, so basically this is for graduate students. But I guess many of the audience already knows the subject. But I will follow my original uh, plan. So first, I am going to talk about the central classification problems. And of course, in algebraic geometry, there are many interesting problems. But um, if, if I am interested in classification problems, then of course the most important and naive question is this one. Classify 
all varieties, all algebraic varieties. Oh, by the way, for simplicity, I'm going to fix the base field to be the field of complex numbers. Okay. Okay. Of course, this is too naive, and of course, by variety, I mean quasi-projective variety. Okay, this is of course the most general question and of course almost impossible to achieve because there are so many such varieties. But um, actually one can take a projective variation to have a projective variety. So assuming this projectivity is not that bad. So for we can actually this, this process can be also uh, interpreted interpreted as, as a MMP by attaching some suitable simple normal crossing boundary divisors. But anyway, one can always assume that <laughs> the variety we are looking for is projective. And by the famous theorem of Hironaka, one can also consider only smooth varieties. So the uh, first question is, Classify all smooth projective algebraic varieties over C. Okay. Okay. Then to achieve this problem, of course, this is uh, already too big. I want to uh, make uh, small steps to achieve this goal. So step one is classify all such varieties. I mean, all smooth projective algebraic varieties over C up to birational equivalence. Okay, so here the the category consists of all smooth projective algebraic varieties. So the natural morphism is a regular map, but just um, lose this condition. We just classify all such varieties up to birational equivalence. So this is the first step. And if we achieve this goal, then now we can um, we can concentrate on those um, each birational classes. Okay. So the second step should be a so find a good representative representative in each birational class rational equivalence class okay this is second step and third find some relations, I you say, so find some birational relations, so varieties in each birational class. So for this step three, uh, I guess Takuso Okada will concentrate on this step three in his lectures. I mean, the, for the uh, modified variation structure uh, spaces. And step four. So now uh, we classify all varieties in each birational classes. Birational equivalence classes up to by by regular equivalence. So actually, this was our original um, aim. Okay. So actually, th these varieties can be also too huge. So possibly we have to choose some. Um, some more 
basic ingredients, invariants. Just choosing some invariants. Okay. So in many cases, this step four is um, just um, constructing some moduli spaces. In many cases. It can be achieved by constructing some moduli spaces. So these are in interesting central problems, I mean basic problems, to achieve this classification. Okay, so MMP is basically for this step one and two. And of, course, of course, actually there are some more steps. So, um, find, what can I say, find a natural projective models model model I'll just say model okay for each of the elements okay so sometimes finding a good projective model is could be important but anyway uh, in MMP we are interested in the uh, first one two and three steps Okay, so from now on we are concentrating right on the on the first three steps. And actually I'm going to talk about step one and step two. Okay. So um, following this slogan, first I'm going to talk about the curve case, which is really easy case. Not easy, but now everybody knows. Okay, so I guess everybody knows this result, but anyway, so topologically, uh, you, you know, this algebraic curves over the field of complex numbers is same as compact Riemann surfaces. So there is a famous theorem by Riemann, which is called the uniformization theorem. So we have a complete classification. So topologically, so, um, so there is a complete birational invariant so which is called genus. So genus plays a very, very important role. So using this, we get this kind of trichotomy. Okay, so topologically it can be either sphere, torus, or torus with many genus. Well, is it torus? But yes, compact Riemann surfaces with many genus. Okay. So of course we can compute the genus. Then genus is zero, one, and at least two. And we can talk about many things. So. If you are interested in the moduli, then it is only one point. There is a unique sphere in this category, and the moduli of elliptic curve is A1 after fixing the section. And uh, it is known that the moduli space of curves of genus G forms a moduli of dimension. 3g minus 3. Okay, so we know many things. So we know the automorphism groups and um, the universal covers fundamental groups. We know almost we know many things. Of course, uh, the general ca type case we have to further analyze the for the properties, but many things are known. Also, in number theory, if we consider the variety over the field of rational numbers, then we know the number of rational points, roughly. So in this case, the rational point can be either empty or the whole, po 
whole space. Here, it is known that the number of rational points, I mean, Q rational points, forms a finitely generated abelian groups. And in this case, there are only finite, finite number of rational points. And also in differential geometry, we know the, that the, <laughs> the, the corresponding Riemannian metric carries a scalar curvature, which is positive, flat, or negative. So everything is very uh, well understood. So um, this pe picture was investigated in 19th century and 20th century. So in, so in some sense, the many of the mathematics in 20th, 20th century is, um, is an attempt to generalize this kind of picture in higher dimensional cases. Okay, so in this respect, algebraic geometry is most successful because we have MMP, so we have the arbitrary variety, and by taking this process of MMP, we are reduced to the one of those classes. So this is one motivation for MMP in some sense. Okay, so now I'm going to focus on the surface case. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to Today, by surface, I mean a smooth projective surface. For today. Tomorrow, I'm going to consider singular surfaces. So, um, first, so I, uh, we want to generalize this picture. So, first question is, is there any complete invariant like genus? Right? And the answer is, no, we don't know. So no known such, such complete invariant. But instead, we know some birational invariant. We know some powerful birational invariants. So the most important one is Godaya dimension, which was already defined by Takuzo Okada in the last lecture. So this is denoted by kappa of S. So surface theorists usually denote the algebraic variety by S. Okay. So I'm not going to um, repeat the definition again. And we have this geometric genus. is denoted by P sub G of S. And this is nothing but this, um, the dimension of the canonical divisor. So the same as H2 SOS. Okay. And one more important birational invariant is irregularity. So it is denoted by Q of S and it is um, so S. So I guess almost every everybody in the audience knows this these kind of notions. Okay, so th these are basic um, in birational invariants. So, um, of course, we do not have this kind of trichotomy in the surface case. B there are too many, uh, too many um, surfaces. So, we need to take a birational map to have a nice model, as I specified in the step two. So, first I need the notion of minimality. So a surface S is called minimal if it is really minimal in the birational sense. And by that I mean for any given birational map, birational morphism, 
Wolfson. É Frisonais Wolfson. Then this surface test is called minimal. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I want to recall the famous Castel Lugos contractability criterion. Okay. Which says that if, if there is a minus one curve on a surface, then we can smoothly contract it. Contract it. Okay, so um, if E is a minus one curve, then we can smoothly contract it. By that I mean there is a F, which is just, just a blowing down of it. I'll just write it in, in this compact way, where S prime is also a smooth projective surface. And, and by this map, E goes to P. Okay, so we can always cont contract a minus one curve smoothly in the project category. And by this, uh, by using this castell lubos contractability, we can immediately uh, prove that S is minimal if and only if there is no minus one curve in it. So by looking at some special negative curve on S, we can s determine if S is minimal or not. Okay? So if it, it is not minimal, just take this castell lewis contractibility and so on. Then for any given smooth projective surface, it has a finite Picard number. Okay? So Every time we take a castell lubos contractibility, the Picard number drops by one. And this should be at least one, right? Because of the um, projective, because of the ample line bundle. So this process should be stopped at, at finally many steps. So for, as a result, for any smooth projective surface, we can, okay, so, There is a minimal surface um, So there is a map Map from S to a minimal surface Where S prime is minimal So for any surfaces, we have this minimal, minimal surface. So the problem is now um, classify all the minimal surfaces. Okay. So actually this classification was already done. And this is called an Enrique classification. case classification okay so sometimes it is called Enrique Kodaira Enrique Kodaira but Kodaira classified all um, compact complex surfaces uh, so 
codire codirect surfaces include some non-algebraic one too. But here I'm go going to write down only algebraic ones. Okay, so uh, the statement is like this. Let S be a minimal surface. Then the result is that S belongs to, sorry, S belongs to the following classes. One of the non-overlapping H classes. Okay, so so first one is the invariant is like this, and this is nothing but the projective plane and hitchable surface, which was appeared in Takuzo Okada's lecture. So here n is not 1. Okay. Because if, F1, if we have f1, then we can contract the minus 1 section. In second case, also the modifier space case. Okay, so this is, um, maybe it's better to write like this, spec c. P1. And this one is <coughs> S2C. Okay. Right? So, so these are all the modifier spaces. And now kappa becomes um, non negative. So here we need the the other birational invariance too. So if Q is two and P G is one, then these surfaces are abelian surfaces. And kappa is one zero and Q is one, P G is zero, then this is called bi-elliptic surfaces. <coughs> and if Q is 0 and PG is 1, then this is called K3 surfaces. And 6 pi is 0, Q is 0, PG is 0, then it's called Enriquez surfaces. So these are the uh, surfaces with the vanishing Godard dimension. <coughs> and now uh, the case with kappa is 1. It is called uh, minimal properly elliptic surfaces. Okay, so PG and Q can have many values. It can be the 0, 1, 2, and there can be many cases. And, and the name is quite long because um, every Enrique surface is actually, uh, every Enrique surface is elliptic. And there can be many elliptic vibration structures in the surfaces in the above. So properly means that we are only considering the kappa 1 case. Okay? And finally, kappa 2 case. Of course, there can be many choices of this geometric genus and irregularity. And there are famous geography problem. So there are huge literature on this. And it's called surfaces of general type. OK, so this is the famous Enriquez classification of algebraic surfaces. OK, 
Okay, so uh, before going on, I want to uh, give some more remarks on this classification. So first, um, I'm going to define some more notions. So first, I'm going to define um, nef nefness. So okay, um, okay. So I will call some divisor is nef. But today I'm going to today I only need this canonical divisor. So so some divisor is nef if its intersection with some curve is non-negative. Curve. I mean, you use the curve. I mean, okay. And canonical divisor is called semi-ample. If um, large mul multiple of this plural canonical divisor is base point three. Base point three. Okay. So this means that we can uh, uh, we get a map from this base point three linear system. Okay, so um, in this case, um, can I say this? This ca consider this canonical ring. <coughs> then one can see that this canonical ring is finitely generated. I mean, this is a finitely generated K algebra. So um, we can take the proj. So actually, this map is this map is well defined, and um, we denote this target space by S sub k. So if um, if k s is nef and case is semi-ample, then we can define this map, and the image of this map is called s -can, the canonical model. So um, for that, where can I, OK. So actually, this um, map is called an Itaka vibration. So um, first, I'm going to summarize some properties of Itaka vibrations. Okay, I'm going to state it without proof. But because today is today is for overview, but one can find the proof if if interested. So um, this map Itaka vibration um, is a morphism with connective fibers. That means actually this is a contraction map, okay? And this image canonical model is a normal projective surface. And second. For any curve on S, for any curve C on S, if it is contracted to a point, then the intersection with the canonical divisor is zero, and vice versa. So from this, you see that if C is a rational curve, then the, the, the unique choice is a C is a minus two curve. 
So this map is actually this map is actually the contracting minus two curves. You see here when we when we uh, when we get the minimal model, we just contract it minus one curves. And here, um, if some si if we assume some situation, then this map is nothing but contracting some minus two curves. Okay, so actually this happens for the general type cases. And third, the Kodaira dimension of S is same as the dimension of the canonical model. Okay. So for the general type surfaces, the canonical model is also a surface. In this case, the map is nothing but contracting minus two curves. And also, so if you are working on this kappa one case, then the dimension of the canonical model is one. So actually, this, this, in this case, the Itaka vibration gives us the elliptic vibration structure. Okay. In this case, this Itaka vibration is an elliptic vibration structure, which is uh, canonically given. And for these cases, elliptic vi um, this canonical map gives a map to a point. Okay. So um, why do we care about this Itaka dimension? So basically, the philosophy is that if we have a um, if we have a variety or surface and has a map to a sometimes map to a lower dimensional varieties, then if one is lucky, then there is a section and there can be some fibers, sometimes singular fibers. So one can study the variety by looking at the fiber, each of the fibers and the base, surf, base spaces. So we can sometimes reduce the problem of S to the problem of C and the fibers. So this is the basic philosophy of this um, considering vibration structures. Okay, so these are stories for the uh, old old cases. And for the remaining 20 minutes, I'm going to talk about a little bit of Mori theory. Okay, so um, first I'm going to state the whole picture of Mori theory without explaining any of the terminologies and concepts. And then I'm going to explain it. So the flow chart. Actually, this flow chart is nothing but just using this castel Castel contractibility. OK, so um, first we start with some smooth projective surface. I'm going to draw exactly the flow chart start. And in, the input is that uh, smooth projective surface S is given. And there is a question is K def? Okay. And if it is yes, then KS is NEF. NEF. And actually, um, it's called minimal model. So, yes, it's minimal model. So, this is definition. It's so called minimal model if KS is NEF. So, here we define the notion of minimality. But here we define a minimal model. Uh, this, this is coming from uh, some, some birational non-rigidity of this kappa, kappa minus infinity case, as was told by Takuso Okada. This P2 
is bi-rational to any of the Hilt of surfaces by taking elementary transformations. So because of this reason, we um, use different terminology. But anyway, I'm going to proceed first. Okay. If, if k is an f, then it's a minimal model by this definition. So we are done. And if, it, if no, then what we do is just taking this castel lubus contraction. So I'm going to write it in more, more general, more generally. So take a map. So this map is nothing but a castel lubus contraction, but here I'm going to write down in this terminology, extremal contraction. Okay. Okay. Then we um, look at the dimension of S and dimension of W. And we compare it. And we ask which is bigger. And if S is bigger than W, then we are done. We are in the situation of modifiable space. Then this extremal contraction is the modifiable space. Space. So we are done. And if the dimension is the same, then then this map is just a uh, castel lubos contraction. So it is just a, just a con blow down. So in this case, um, let S be W and we do the procedure again. So every time we go to the left left side, the Picard number uh, drops by one. So this process should terminate at finally many steps. Okay. So um, so for any smooth projective surface, um, we have a minimal model, and it can be either a minimal uh, minimal surface, and it can be either a minimal model or a modifiable space. And in the surface case, we already know that these cases are this one, this one, and this one. These are all the modifiable space structures on for the surfaces. And the minimal models are nothing but those, those things. Okay. So this is the flow chart of MMP for surfaces. And for higher dimensional cases, it can be uh, somewhat complicated, but the basic uh, philosophy is the same. There are some um, some bad things, bad things. So we need more procedures. But anyway, so um, this process we need cone theorems and contraction theorems, contraction theorem. To guarantee the existence of this extremal contraction. Okay, so this is MMP. But by MMP, um, sometimes we include include the abundance theorem. So, so I'm going to write it. In general, this is open. It's, it's uh, most important conjectures in MMP, but for surfaces, it is already solved. Um, so the statement is, if Ks is an F, then it is semi-ample. 
So sometimes it's, it's called a semi ample conjecture. So as I said, this conjecture is already proven, but I'm not sure, but as far as I know, the, the um, proof of, of the abundance theorem for surfaces requires this Enriquez classification. Is that true? It depends on this Enriquez classification. Anyway, so the, it, anyway, the proof for surfaces is also very non-trivial. Okay, so by the, thanks to this abundance theorem, if we have a minimal model, then KS is semi-ample. So we can always consider this Itaka vibration. Okay, so by Itaka vibration, we have this elliptic vibration structures and canonical model of this, of uh, surfaces of general type. Okay. Um, so for the remaining 12 minutes, I'm going to talk about cone theorem and contraction theorem. Uh, to do that, we need some, some notions about the Mori cones and so on. I'm not sure the time is sufficient or not, but I will, I will talk about the very basics of them. Okay, so some notations. Okay, so one of S. So I'm going to uh, define some notations. Okay, so this is numerical equivalence. So it's the same as homological equivalence. And this N sub 1s is um, S. And Z1 is nothing but group what one cycles. And again, numerical equivalence. Okay? So um, we have this real vector spaces of uh, dimension rank of Picard number of S. Okay, then we define the cone of effective one cycles here ci is irreducible component of c and ri's are positive real numbers non negative real numbers Okay, so then we have a cone inside this real vector space. Then um, the closure of this one, the closure of this cone inside the n sub 1 s is called the Kleiman Mori cone. So this plays on a central role in this cone theorem and contraction theorem. And some more notations. So this appears frequently in MMP. So um, this notation means we are collecting every one cycles having non-negative intersection with H. Okay, and also we use this notation. So this is intersection of the Mori cone with this H sub, this one. Okay, now we can state the con cone theorem and contraction theorem. Okay. 
Okay, cone zero. So the statement is like this. The Kleinman Mori cone can be described in the following way. So this is a So I need to explain this Ri. So there are sub i are extremal rays so of this Kleiman Mori cone. Okay. So I'm going to draw the picture of this situation later. Um, contained in negative part of the climate molecule. Okay. So I'm going to explain the meaning of extremal and ray. Okay. Second, for any positive number epsilon and ample divisor H, there are only finally many extremal rays such that this intersection number is non-positive. Okay. okay, so I'm going to define this first. So um let's spell it right here. Okay, so the if we have a convex sub, a closed convex cone in the real vector space V, and consider this subcone W, then this subcone is called extremo if um, if for two vectors in the vector space V, the, if the sum is in the sub, sub cone, then those are actually in the sub cone. Okay? This is the definition of extremal cone. So uh, one example is like this. So assume that, uh, so consider the two dimensional real vector space, and let's say this is a com closed convex cone, V. Then um, this ray, uh, this one is, okay, so first, so this is called the ray. If the dimension is one. Okay, so this is a extreme ray, and this is also extreme ray. And this is not a extreme ray, right? Because if we add this vector and this vector, then we have this and this, then we have this vector. So this is not an extremal ray. Okay, so, so our eyes are extremal rays. So the picture is as follows. So um, if you look at this, we are describing this part. I mean, the negative, negative part of the, part of the Climate Morricone. And for this, we are not describing anything. So if I draw the picture, it's like <coughs> this. Mm, okay, so. Um, the picture is not so. Oops. Okay. Okay. 
So this is a cone, and um, uh, we are taking the hyperplane section. Okay, so this part is this one. And this hyperplane section is k0. If we take an intersection with k, then the answer is 0 for these factors. And this part is k negative. Okay? So it says that um, for k negative part, uh, r is an extremal race. And um, if we take an amplifier h, and if we move this case a little bit, that means we are taking this hyperplane section. Hyperplane section, so it is k s plus h. Zero. Then there are only finally many extremal rays. So the 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 negative part, the shape is um, a polyhedral. Okay, so this is what uh, Kleiman Morris theorem says. And and the contraction theorem. So I guess Sanglak will be talking about contraction theorem in the next lecture. So I'm not going to uh, write down it. But by contraction theorem, we can actually contract the, uh, the classes in this external ray to a projective surface. So it is not always possible, but, but us usually it is possible. So I'm going to talk about the, the, the bad cases later. And, and I'm going to give you some easy examples um, for the last one minute. Okay, since I have only one minute, I'll give you two very basic examples. So first, P1. Okay, so P1 is a pickle number one. So this vector space is just a real line. So we have this real line. And what is this? Climate mori cone. Okay, this is just this part, right? Okay, so it is actually already closed, and this is so this one. So actually, there are um, two sub cones in this climate mori cone. So first one is this one, this sub cone, and the whole cone itself. There are two sub cones. And each of the cone corresponds to the morphism. So the first one is to a map from P2 to the point. And this one is nothing but the isomorphism. Hmm? Uh, you know, this is not contractable. And the next example is P1 cross P1. So for convenience, I will denote it by first component of P1 and second component of P1. Okay, then since the Picard number is 2, the vector space is, is real plane. Okay, plane. And actually this is, um, here the Mori cone is, actually this is close to, and it is generated by the, the each of the lines L1 and L2. So L1 and L2 are lines in this I mean lines lines in this line P1 of this um, filterable surface. So the cone is this one. Okay. So of course so again we have some sub cones this one and the whole one, and we have two extremal rays. And each extremal rays, we can pick up some point, which corresponds to L1 and L2. Then these points give us the map from S to the P1. And second copy, because we are contracting this L1 part, so we get the 
second map, and for this we get this map. Okay, so these are examples of some um, climate molecules in the simplest case. So I stop here. Thank you. <laughs>